Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another video, it's Wednesday morning the 28th of February. And in this video, let's see how many subscribers I can lose. <laughs> so we're going to talk about someone that I haven't talked about for a few months. I haven't talked about Peter Falding, the um, so-called self-professed diving and sonar expert who was absolutely slated after the Nicola Bully investigation. Well, he's back, and he's back to look for a little two-year-old toddler who has been missing, fell in the River Saw in Leicestershire on February the 18th, and he's still missing. So Peter Folding and his um, SGI, whatever they're called, SGI International, his firm have been brought in. So let's talk about that. The British media have been following the disappearance of two-year-old Zylo Maraziva, and don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, after him allegedly falling in the River Saw during a family walk on February the 18th. It's such a sad story, sad situation, and that little boy obviously needs to be brought home. Police have had a bunch of resources over the last 10 days in the River Saw trying to locate him. We have been able to secure additional support from colleagues in, uh, in local regions and from national police resources. We are using specialist divers within the River Saw and we continue to use the helicopter and aerial technology to try and locate the little boy. Our priority for Leicestershire Police is to make sure that we, we find this little boy. I would like to thank members of the public for all their support yesterday, and, um, but at the same time, I would like to really emphasise how dangerous this area is at the moment and ask that members of the public do refrain from coming back to this location for their own safety and also because, as I've said, we've got a very professional a very coordinated search in place and we wouldn't want anything to jeopardise the best opportunity we've got of locating this little boy. Yesterday, the British media reported that they brought in the big guns, Peter Folding. And I'll read here from the Mail Online, who uh, love Peter. Police searching for missing toddler Zylo Maritziva have recruited a diving expert who claimed to have found Nicola Bully's body after six minutes of trying last year. Yeah, he said he found her after six minutes. We'll come back to that. All right, we'll come back to that. Peter Folding, Specialist Group International, SGI, helped in the hunt for Nicola Bully's body in February 2023 with Mr. Folding later claiming he had found the missing mother in the River Wire in Lancashire using advanced sonar in a matter of minutes. Peter had previously slammed police. He'd gone all over the British media, drumming up all of this speculation, saying she's not in the river, she's not in the river, because he didn't find her. He said she's not in the river. Why? Because if she was... He would have found her, do you remember? Change the story after the fact. Again, we'll come back to it all. So we're going to read what the um, Independent Police Review found, the College of Policing, in November 2023. But now Leicestershire Police have turned to Peter to assist in the hunt for two-year-old Zylo. I thought it was Zylo's family that had asked them to join, but anyhow... So little Zylo fell in the River Saw in the area near to Aylstone in Leicestershire on February 18th. A Leicester police sportsman said, As part of an ongoing effort to locate Zylo, the search parameter has since been widened with the operation focusing on the stretch of river around Watermead Park and Burstall over the weekend. Officers from Leicestershire Police continue to be supported by specialist diving teams from Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire Police, as well as other forces and search and rescue teams from across the region and country. Support in the air has also been provided by the National Police Air Service. 
Following further conversations with search specialist and Zylo's family, support will be provided by Specialist Group International from tomorrow. Assistant Chief Constable Michaela Kerr, who is leading the operation, said, Our search operation to locate Zylo continues to widen, as we know he may have travelled further from where he went into the water and potentially outside of our force area. Our decision to include SGI in the search in liaison with Zylo's family and having spoken to both the company and independent specialists, I'd like to remind the public that the river is dangerous and that they should not go into the water themselves because it's just an absolute nightmare. Rivers across the UK are an absolute nightmare at the moment. It is still raining guys it's still raining so where is this in the world it's right slap bang in the center of england you can't get more central than this location this is the river saw it's a major tributary of the river trent xylo fell in around here and this is where they're focusing their search efforts at the moment. Zylo's family, who were understood to be local to the area, described their son as cheeky, funny, who is a bundle of joy, and they've thanked members of the community for their ongoing support. His mother said, Zylo is a cheeky, funny, friendly, smart, caring and independent little boy. He never fails to make me laugh or smile and always loves a cuddle and some kisses. Zylo loves playing with his toys and watching cartoons. Me, his dad and the whole family are so heartbroken at what happened. We thank everyone who has supported us and helped us during this time. We are extremely grateful for this. All we want is for Zylo to be found as soon as possible. Thank you. Zylo's father, who jumped into the river in a bid to rescue Zylo and had to be taken to hospital, added, Zylo is a bundle of joy to us. He is a charming and creative little boy and just started at nursery. He loves cuddles, playing with his toys and going to the park. As a family, we have been completely devastated over the past few days as the search for Zylo continues. It's hard to describe the pain and suffering we are going through. We would like to thank the search teams at the scene. We'd also like to thank members of the public for all of your support. It is your prayers that are keeping us strong. Assistant Chief Constable Kerr revealed police had recovered CCTV footage of the moment Zylo plunged into the swollen river, added there is nothing to suggest anything other than a tragic set of circumstances. So please, guys, I implore you not to start making unfounded accusations about the family or about foul play. The police have CCTV. They know what happened. His dad tried desperately to save him. This is a tragic, tragic accident. Please, please do not, please don't attack the family in my comments or anywhere else. This is just how swollen the river is. This is just awful, tragic, tragic circumstances. Acting Chief Constable Kerr said, we have now recovered CCTV imagery that we believe shows the moment when the little boy disappeared into the water. The camera was in the local vicinity. What it allows us to do is it allows us to be really clear around the circumstances and exactly where the little boy went into the river. And it's that that's allowed us to be really confident around our search strategy. It has been significantly helpful, as have accounts of people in the vicinity at the time. And it's allowed us to ensure we are getting the right information to the family so we can give them some updates on those moments before the little boy went into the water. So Peter Folding is now... On the case. He claimed that he found Nicola Bully in six minutes. Now you're going to come into my comments section and say, Michelle, you're not an expert. Not an expert in sonar, no, but I do know how rivers work. It's not just me that have problems with Peter Folding. He's been taken off the list of experts for the National Crime Agency. So I think Leicestershire Police are taking a little bit of a gamble with Peter. Although, I guess it's an all-hands-on-deck operation, given this little boy has now been in that river for 10 days. I guess they're taking the opinion, well, if somebody is able to operate sonar system, then at least give them a chance. And I, I understand that. I do. I understand that. I understand how desperate the family are going to be. I just want to remind people, though, that all that glitters isn't gold, where Peter Folding is concerned. So I'm going to read here. 
from page 98 onwards for a few pages. This is the independent review that was done on the handling of the Nicola Bully investigation by Lancashire Police. And this is the um, College of Policing. So, Peter Folding. At the time of Nicola's disappearance, Mr Folding was listed on the expert advisors database maintained by the National Crime Agency and had previously conducted search and dive activities with several other police forces in the UK. His company was recommended to join the database in 2008. Experts can be requested for listing on the database by law enforcement staff nationally to support investigations and provide specialist knowledge to forces if required. In this case, Lancashire Constabulary did not make a request to use the services of SGI, nor was SGI recommended by the NCA as a support to the investigation. However, on the 3rd of February, prior to any attendance at the location of Nicola's disappearance or contact with Lancashire Constabulary, Mr Folding was interviewed by Sky News. He provided comments and aspects of the scene of Nicola's disappearance specifically. It appears, and I am not on the scene, that there isn't any marks where Nicola fell in the river. So it's a bit odd. On the 5th of February, Mr Folding appeared again in the media, where he referenced the ability of his team and equipment and the greater search and dive expertise it provided in comparison with that used by the police. He stated that the police's equipment was low-tech, added that it's very unlikely they will be able to find a body with it. That was uh, in the sun. Nicola's family became aware of this, and they asked for SGI to take part in the searches. Initially, the police said no, but then they relented. You see, Peter was saying what the family needed to hear at that time. On that day, the 5th of February, he said, my belief is she's not in the river at all. And that's what the family needed to hear, because if she wasn't in the river, there was hope of recovery. So he gave them false hope. He said, if she's in the river, I'll find her. If I don't find her, she's not in the river. That's exactly what they wanted to hear. But on the 6th of February, I was there that day at St Michael's. This is footage from the 6th of February. It was the day that SGI turned up. It was a Monday. They did a walk around on the Monday morning. On Tuesday, they did some searching. Then on Wednesday, they packed up and went home. Not before doing some media with Paul Ansel at the side of the river. Okay, we'll move on a little here. Peter claimed that he could carry on talking smack about the police to the media because he didn't sign an NDA. And this is what SGI's written response was to the College of Policing. Peter did not sign an NDA either before or on that day. He was asked to sign a piece of paper which he was not provided a copy of. As we recall, it set out SGI's responsibilities insofar as risk assessment, health and safety issues, etc. This missive was not set out as an NDA. So that was a mistake by the police. They should have got him to sign an NDA. But Peter Folding continued to engage with the media between 6th of February and 8th of February, providing his views and opinions on Nicola's disappearance. On the 6th of February in the Times newspaper, Mr Folding repeated a similar theory to one provided on the 5th, claiming he would be able to find Nicola within three days if she was in the river. But he didn't find her. Mr Folding made several statements to the media that were later found to be at odds with the inquest findings. My belief is she's not in the river. My opinion is, had Nicola gone in by that bench, she would have gone to the bottom and drifted a couple of metres. If Nicola was in there, we will find her. If she's there, our sonar will pick her up straight away. Sadly, the discovery was not found in the river, but in the reeds at the side of the river which was not part of our remit, as the side scan sonar does not penetrate reeds above or below the water. There were no reeds, guys. There were no reeds. I've been there. There's no reeds. No reeds. Okay. Now, as part of this independent review into the Nicola Bully investigation, Peter Folding was asked to provide information. And his view was that he made a credible find during the search on the Tuesday, the 7th of February. He presented sonar images of this find to the review team. He went on to explain that he had brought this credible find to the attention of the police, of the police lead, on February the 7th. This find was Nicola Bully's body. 
If he'd have really found Nicola Bully's body, or what he believed to be her body, do you think he would have gone all over the media to brag about this? Did he do that? No. This was all after the fact to the um, College of Policing. That area had already been searched, but Peter obviously has got superior equipment. Documentation was recorded daily for the search activities and had been reviewed for the 7th of February to identify this find and its outcome. The record documents that on this date, the National Search Lead was also in attendance at the scene and was briefed by the police search lead. SGI was tasked to search the hot zone, the area around the bench for the entire day. It's recorded that during this survey, Mr. Folding and SGI identified one item on the riverbed, which couldn't be ruled out. So police divers dove and cleared the item. Divers went down and cleared the item. On the 8th of February, Mr. Folding stated that their three-day involvement ended after a thorough and extensive search of the area. There was no sign of Nicola, yet, months later, he found the body within six minutes. They interviewed the diver that went down after Peter's find. And that diver said, I'm actually 100% sure that there was no body in that part of the water at that time. It's not very often I dive in such an unobstructed body of water with such a flat bottom and with visibility. The diver provided their own record of this dive to the review team. The coordinates of the images that they that they that they that their record of that dive match exactly with those of SGI's images. This diver also provided the primary dive evidence to the coroner at the inquest into Nicola's death. To supplement this and to provide an independent view, the review team contacted a leading government sonar specialist for their opinion of um, Peter's sonar images taken by SGI. They provided the expert view that they had low confidence that the image was that of a human casualty. Mr. Folding later contacted the review team on the 26th of October 2023 and provided further images to this find. To provide additional expert and independent opinion, these and the earlier sonar images were assessed by a lecturer from Cranfield University, who stated, the target cannot be positively identified as a human body based on the data presented. In my opinion, this target would be classed as a low probability of confidence for human remains. I would recommend the target be inspected by divers or a robotic camera system following high priority targets in the dive area. So that was done by a diver who cleared the area. Peter, in my opinion, made the Nicola Bully investigation into the beast that it became. And this is a very different situation. And I hope that if he doesn't find Zylo, that he doesn't try any stupid tricks with the media. I sincerely hope if he doesn't find him, he just goes away climbs back into whichever location he comes from and enjoys the rest of his book sales. But let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Straight to the style. Boom! Good girl! Good girl!